world with Ricky's rig. <laughs> Ricky, I mean, you've, you're known for the iconic Explorer, and you actually have the original 57 well, Korean. I've got, the, I've got an old one. Yeah. And the deal is, I, a lot of times with people, I don't like to, I won't let people touch it. Sure. Or, you know, yeah. Because I love this thing. Believe it or not, it it's, well, it almost broke my heart because when we had the great flood in here in Nashville, it sat in water up to here. Oh, man. And I'd like to thank RS Guitar Works in Kentucky. They saved this thing. They saved this, and I'm getting ready to show you another one. They saved this thing for me and brought it back to life. And there's fillers in here and stuff that they did, but they just, uh, I, I've used this thing for so long. Gary's so yeah. used to seeing me with it and right. people used to seeing me with it. And now uh, the way we're doing Freebird and stuff, I've kind of retired it just to playing Freebird at the end of the night. Awesome. Um, I went to Gibson and uh, one of the things that's really, that I'm proud of is that when Gary asked me to come back to the to the band back in 96. A long time ago. Uh, hey. He basically wanted me to cover, you know, all of Alan's parts in, you know, the in the music. Kind of interesting that Alan and I loved, you know, the, the same guitars, you right. know what I mean? So, a lot of people often ask me, I get this all the time, hey man, uh, is that Alan's guitar you got? And, and for once and for all, no, it's not Alan's guitar. <laughs> Alan's guitar is in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and with his or from his family. Yeah, and you were playing that in Blackhawk. Or, well, or Blackfoot. In, in Blackfoot. Yeah. yeah, one like train, it. Train, yes. and one like it. Yeah, but the deal about it is, there it is. I'm proud of it. Beautiful. And it was funny because Rich Fortas of Guns and Roses, he's a friend of ours, came out not too long ago. He says, "I want that guitar," and I mm -hmm. went. You'll have to fight my wife and my daughter over this one because <laughs> it stays, you know, in the family. You know, I saw you guys do a live DVD at Starwood like 15 years ago, and I saw you break the whammy off that guitar <laughs> during that. At the end finale, you were, you were hitting Yeah, and I snapped it, snapped off, it off and threw yeah. it like, yeah. yeah. A lot of that's, people have... That's a, a lot good of people saw, moment. A lot of people saw that. I get a little... Uh, maybe I'm a little overboard sometimes and I get a little crazy, but I'm a nutcase. So what can I tell you? The one that I really want you to see, this thing, Gary was there when they authenticated it. Yeah. This, they don't even know. Okay, it, it's a Firebird and as you can see it is. Yeah. But they authenticated it and I had it converted back years ago because I wanted to be like other guitar players like Clapton and, and you know, Jim, Jimmy Page and all those guys. I wanted two pickups and, you know, it came with one, a oh, bar yeah. pickup here. But when I took it in, they got to doing the measurements on it. And the funny thing is, is the neck is not like the production models. The body is just a tad bit thicker and the guy even asked me he said are you sure this is a real Gibson you know uh -huh. and I said what are you talking about so they went and they dug out some records and different things like that and if you notice it doesn't have a firebird emblem here right they brought it out there and come to find out Rick Gimbar and them assessed that it's one of not too many uh, prototypes Wow that they made uh, before they made the production model. So what year do they? Who knows? They don't. They they wow. think that the bodies were you know done in like '60, but it was put together in '61, cool. and then the production models came out in '63. Well, how long have you had it? Oh God, <laughs> probably almost all my all my life. Wow. I mean, I've had it for years, and Alan had a beautiful Alan's one was so beautiful, man, you know, and I loved Firebirds. And uh, just coincidentally, now I brought it back out not too long ago to start playing it on the road again. How cool. And uh, it's a it's a really great guitar. Frankenstein made it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It used to be a Stratocaster. <laughs> yeah. Put it all together. 
Yeah. Other than That's that, great. other than that, you know, I love, I love Black Les Pauls. Sure. Yeah. Um, I got this Black Les Paul that I have my wife's name put on. Oh, that's beautiful. And it's and it's directly off of my my '76 uh, Les Paul uh, oh. that that I got my old one, and I had them to copy it and put my wife's name on it. Oh, that's beautiful. And I play it, you know, uh, I play this one quite a bit. Right. And Steve Gaines is such a black beauty guy. Oh man, oh. what what a phenomenal gifted guy, oh, you know. Nighttime man. Oh yeah. God. Oh, that was so good, you know. He his Les Paul, for some reason, he could make it sound like a Strat. Right. And he played Strat too, but that one Les Paul had a sound that was unbelievable. Yeah, he'd, he'd be yeah. like Roy Clark one minute. Yeah. Oh yeah, man. I mean, mind blowing, man. This one, this one was made for me by Gibson because a friend of mine, Jerry James Nichols, this guitar player, this guy, he's a great guitar player. I saw his original and I wanted one because it's got the old P90 here. Sure. Supposedly they made them, but made very few of them. So Gibson made me one, and I play this thing a lot. Wow, it's beautiful. And it sounds incredible. And uh, it even had the custom thing on the originals and all that stuff. Love but, that. But uh, other than that, you know, I just got a few other ones, you know, that that I take out with me. and. Yeah, other than these iconic vintage mm -hmm. priceless instruments. <laughs> <laughs> this one was made for, by the custom shop and several years, several, several years ago to be identical to my, my this older one here. Yeah. The only problem is, is when you're playing Freebird, Sparky and I have to get up on this fret right here at the very end of the, right. I call it the go round, you know? Yeah. And the problem is with this one, I didn't cut it quite deep enough, but it works. Oh, really? Yeah, it works good. Yeah, man. Huh. So, so there you a go. Deeper cut on your old one than that one. Huh. Yes, yes. That's interesting. Okay, so amazing guitars. Amp-wise, I know your amps are on stage. We'll take pictures and show them later. But what uh, what are you running exactly? Well, when they had the flood, I lost my two old Turing Marshalls, which was a '71 and '72. Yeah. Which takes you all the way back to train, train, and way back, and yeah, all the way, yeah. But I lost my two old Turing Marshalls, and Marshall didn't kind of want to work with me anymore, and so I was kind of stuck for amps. And a friend of mine um, turned me on to Wizard, oh, Wizard Amps. Cool. And uh, I, I called him up. I said, "Can you get me in touch with these guys?" He said, "Yeah." So he got me in touch with Rick St. Pierre, and. Uh, Rick, I got a hold of him and he said, I'll tell you what I can do. I'm getting ready to go back out with ACDC and I'll make you a couple to get you up and get you running. Well, I'm using what they call the Vintage Classic. Okay, there's two of them, Vintage Modern Classic and the Vintage Classic. The Vintage Classic is like your old Plexis mm -hmm. and they got the EO34s and I just love that tone because the tubes they get hot, and that's where sure. you get that sweetness. Right. And uh, he's been so gracious to me and uh, kind to me and stuff to be able to get everything that I want. Uh, in the cabinets is what they call, I've got greenbacks, but I also got these two speakers called creambacks that give you a little bit more solidity in the low end. Oh, cool. And you mix, you mix match them in the cabinet. Beautiful sound. So you're micing kind of a combination. Yeah, of the two yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, and the front house guy, he's using a Palmer, what they call a Palmer Direct, also uh, on me, and he kind of blends it together to give it the distinction and you sure. know all that. Other than that, I'm a guy that like Gary. I don't use too much, you know, in between uh, the the guitar and the amp. You know, yeah. I love. Jeff Beck, man, I mean, one of my heroes, and Gary's heroes, right. and probably Sparky's. Oh, yeah. I saw an article with him like that. One time he said he didn't like any interruption yeah. between the guitar and the Speaking amp. Of <laughs> Speaking of interruptions. <laughs> Hi, everybody. <laughs> Speak. Get <laughs> them back, Stu. Hey, yeah. right hey. Yeah. Just because he sings all the songs. Is this a serious conversation? <laughs> this was serious? Let me show you my microphone. <laughs> all right, it's been it's been very it's been been So really all I use, like Gary was saying a while ago, all I use is kind of a wah-wah pedal. This is a mic stand. <laughs> you 
you hold it like this, and sometimes you can twirl it. <laughs> Bye guys. This is gonna be the best one you've ever had. Yeah. That made it right okay, there. That was very cool. <laughs> so, pedal wise, a wah wah pedal on certain songs. Is it? A, did you? Uh, well, I got an old crybaby. Yeah. Okay. Cool. But we had to kind of retire it because it kept getting broken and. Sure. So, uh, my guitar tech Ruglo found me a one, the newer crybabies that that work really well and yeah. it's got a wider range to it. Oh, you know. Cool. Other than that, the only thing I really use up there is really a little bit of coursing to spread spread the tone a little bit.